Uh, before starting, I would like to thank the organizer for inviting me and giving me the opportunity to talk about uh, this work. Uh, so I'm going to talk uh, not about uh, uh, particles or active matter. It's, uh, it's passive. It's, uh, I'm going to talk about what, uh, what's going to happen if you take uh, an elastic sheet and you twist it. You're twisting it, but you're twisting a lot uh, until reaching this kind, of, this kind of state. So basically, it's, uh, this talk is about how can, uh, what can we understand, what can, how can we model this kind of thing. Uh, just uh, acknowledge my uh, collaboration. So uh, this, this uh, project has been initiating some time ago with uh, Arshad Kudoli at Clark University. Uh, they also work with uh, Romildo at the uh, UFRA Jota. And uh, uh, Benny Davidovich and Vincent Demery worked uh, on the theoretical side of, the, of this problem. Uh, let me take some, uh, some time to uh, uh, introduce my, uh, my group. So it's a very old group. Uh, it has uh, like uh, seven months. It's been, uh, I, I started it uh, earlier this year. So it's a fast growing group. So started with zero students. Uh, six months later, we are two. So maybe we can uh, have a uh, Moore's law and uh, you can expect uh, how many people in 10 years, I don't know. Uh, anyway, so uh, Philippe and Pablo are working with me. So I'm trying to convince them that there's a lot of uh, interesting stuff in experimental soft matter. Hopefully they're going to get convinced. Uh, but the, uh, the things that I'm interested in, uh, my talk will be about uh, uh, elasticity and geometry and complexity that emerges when you bring these two, uh, these two things. I'm also interested in uh, adhesion and fracture in uh, disordered material uh, instability in this kind of, uh, of problems. Uh, I'm looking at the, the statistics of a, of a crack front propagating in heterogeneous material. Um, free structure interaction uh, related to locomotion or just uh, when the mechanical instability has some dissipation because she's embedded in a dissipative environment. Uh, and also uh, this kind of, uh, of problem of a, of a fluid flow that is uh, uh, depositing on the substrate. And uh, as you can see, if you change the substrate, you start having some uh, uh, very interesting uh, uh, fluid instability. In this case, you get these kind of things when the, the fluid flow at some time scale, and this, there is a solidification pr uh, process going on. And when these two processes have similar time scale, you, can, you start getting this kind of, uh, of structure. OK, so uh, I'm interested in twisting things, uh, sheets. And uh, everybody has already done that. So if you have a, a wet towel, you want to remove the water, what you usually do, you take that towel, and then you're twisting it. So why we do that is twisting things is a very efficient way to pack that structure, to induce uh, compressive stress. And by doing that, you can remove the water. But it's not only the, the, the only purpose. You can make a turban, or you can wrap candy, you can make everything. So maybe uh, at the end of my talk, I can convince you that uh, there are lots of, uh, uh, of this process going on around us. And uh, maybe as a physicist, uh, I can rephrase uh, this, this problem like this. So we start with a 2D uh, geometry, a sheet, planar. And then uh, by doing this twist, we, we end up with a quasi-1D uh, structure. So how, how does that? What's the path to go from uh, this shape to the other? Uh, what's the internal finite structure? And uh, what's the role of elasticity or, or the stretching? OK? Uh, so this is maybe uh, sufficient, or uh, it's, uh, it's interesting on its own. But uh, there are also some uh, more advanced technological applications where they use exactly that techniques uh, to make uh, stronger uh, fibers uh, because you start uh, making uh, a structure with lots of pores and uh, 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 convoluted shape. You can think of uh, application in terms of uh, energy harnessing or battery that they are flexible. And uh, basically what motivated us uh, to study that is maybe this work where uh, they use these uh, tensional twist folding things to embed a functional uh, particle inside the pores and to have maybe uh, some uh, uh, hand and electrical property or transport property that can be useful for uh, any application. So basically understand how, uh, how you can uh, uh, control or predict the kind of structure is maybe very important for this kind of application. 
And as far as we know, it's, uh, it's still only a, a, a empirical, uh, this kind of, uh, of engineering uh, strategy. Okay, so basically, uh, I'm, in this talk, I won't talk too much about the mechanical behavior, uh, the stress that develops. It's important, but uh, I'm not going to focus about that. So maybe I can rephrase this problem into a packing problem. And there are lots of, uh, of study in this, uh, with this perspective. So if you're, inject if you're injecting a wire into a helical cell, you start having some interesting structure uh, with some uh, nematic orders. If you crumple a piece of, uh, of a sheet, uh, here it's a cross section, you have other kind of orders, and uh, growth uh, inside the cavity, like, uh, 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 how do you call that, uh, red cabbage, or here it's a brain, you start having some uh, complexity going on. Uh, so what's, uh, what's new? What, is there something new when you twist? What kind of signature you can get when uh, you get this com uh, uh, compaction with, uh, by twisting an elastic sheet? Um, maybe I, I, before uh, diving into the, the, exper uh, the experimental results, I, maybe it's good to have some uh, idea of how, what's the mechanics of uh, elastic plates and uh, thin uh, slender structure. Oh. Okay, that's here. Uh, how so you have a, 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 a multi-scale uh, energy uh, when you're dealing with a filament of plates. So basically, it's very easy to bend a filament or, or a sheet. Bending doesn't cost almost uh, any, any energy, but stretching, it costs a lot more. Why is that? It's just because the, uni the, the, the stretching energy goes as the thickness, uh, linearly as the, si the thickness, but bending energy goes as the thickness to the cube. So when the thickness is very small, uh, bending energy costs almost nothing. And then the, the consequence is that for example, if you want to compress uh, a sheet or a filament, I'm, I promise I, I'm not touching that stuff, but it's sensitive. Um, compressing costs a lot of energy, you're changing the length of the, that material, but then uh, it can escape out of plane and then recover its initial length. The only cost is just uh, the, 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 the bending cost. So whenever it's possible, uh, a slender structure, be it uh, a filament or, or, or a sheet, want to uh, buckle if it matches the boundary condition that you apply. Then you can. That's uh, the first per person to, to do that. It's uh, Euler again. Uh, he has his uh, Euler column, and he, look at, he looked at the, this, this, this instability. So it's the case, it's the case when we, you don't have any substrate. But then when, when you have a substrate, like uh, this dog, for example, uh, he has lots of skin. Okay, that uh, needs to, to match its, uh, its body size. And of course, uh, you cannot imagine that have a, a large uh, buccal uh, uh, skin because it has to conform to the, to the body. So instead of having lar one large buccal, it starts to wrinkle. It's a, a substrate effect. You can also have a, an effective substrate effect. So if you uh, uh, have a, a sheet and a tension, you don't imagine that you can have a, a large buckle because it costs uh, much more energy. So instead, you have uh, some uh, smaller wrinkle. So that was for a slender structure, filament or sheet. But sheets have uh, uh, another uh, interesting uh, property of a, a geometrical property. Uh, is that, uh, let's see this. So it's very, as I said, it's very easy to bend. But if you want to decide to bend in two orthogonal direction, then it starts to, be, uh, to become much more uh, complicated. So you have a, a geometrical rigidity if you want to bend. So then I actually can. And what I do is starting to localize some deformation in singular point. Why, why is that? Uh, well, then that's uh, this other mathematician goes who tells the, the answer is that you cannot transform, <coughs> sorry, you cannot transform uh, uh, a surface, uh, uh, or you cannot, uh, for example, oh, let's say, let's, how did I frame that? Transformation that changes the Gaussian curvature induces uh, in plane stretching. So, exactly that. So, uh, uh, a planar sheet has uh, a zero Gaussian curvature. A Gaussian curvature is just the product of two orthogonal uh, principal uh, curvature direction. If I want to uh, uh, conform 
this uh, planar uh, sheet onto a sphere. I'm inducing two non-zero curvature, and that costs a lot of energy because you induce stretching. So that's what Gauss is telling us. The, uh, 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 the, the example of a planisphere is just a consequence of this, uh, this theorem. Now, if you combine uh, the, uh, the, the bendiness of, elas of elastic sheets with this uh, geometric con constraint, then you understand why uh, elastic sheets crumple. Because if you compress into an uh, uh, orthogonal direction, you necessarily induce uh, stretching. But then if you confine the stretching along lines and, for, uh, and vertices, then it costs less energy. Okay, okay so that was uh, the two, uh, the, the most theoretical uh, uh, part of my, uh, uh, of my talk. So now let's go to the experimental setup. So it's very uh, simple. So you have a we have a, a device, uh, a sheet clamped at two ends, and the only thing that we do is uh, apply a, a, a force or a tension or a pre-stretch fixed, and then I'm twisting it. Okay? And then uh, I encourage you to do this uh, while I'm talking. You have a sheet. It's a very uh, low-cost experiment, and uh, that's, uh, that's very interesting, actually. Uh, so feel free to, to do that. Um, so in, in terms of a, of a parameter, uh, it's, well, basically, I'm not using paper because paper usually uh, tear, so then that uh, you need some uh, more uh, uh, stretchiness. So usually I'm using, uh, it's not written, but uh, elastomer or, uh, or plastic that, uh, that has more, that's more resistant. Um, okay. So you quickly realize that uh, when you start twisting uh, a ribbon like this, the base state is an helicoid, right? So uh, an helicoid, just to remind you, has a negative Gaussian curvature. So basically, this geometry, uh, this, uh, this loading condition, induces a change of Gaussian curvature. And now the, the question is uh, how the, the ribbon can get uh, uh, out of this, uh, this constraint, because it costs a lot of energy. Okay, so these are uh, experiment picture. Uh, if you stretch the, 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 the ribbon and you twist a little bit, you have this uh, helicoidal uh, state. But then, uh, as you increase the, the, the twist, then it starts to, it, it start to buckle. You have, so you have a, a longitudinal wrinkling occurring in the central region. If you're uh, increasing the tension more, it starts to buckle, but in that case, you have a, a transverse buckle, buckle, so it buckles this way. Okay. I'm playing with the twisting, uh, the twist angle and the tension. Yeah, because uh, you, you, it's, uh, it's inextensible. Basically, uh, a sheet of paper is inextensible, so you can't play too much with the tension without breaking. Okay, but uh, something that you can do uh, is to get, uh, so let's see if you can get uh, this regime. This regime, you, you get it uh, for a relatively large uh, twist angle and almost uh, no tension. So you get, uh, you get a transverse buckling. And then if you twist a lot, then you're, you're, you, you can get a, a loop again. Okay, uh, this is uh, not very specific to a particular material. You can get the, the same kind of, sh uh, of shape uh, using steel, plastic, fabric. Really, it's more about uh, a combination of uh, geometric complexity and uh, elasticity. So maybe you can uh, uh, understand better what, what's going on. So we can organize all the morphology that we get in the phase diagram using the twist angle of, uh, as a, a control parameter and the tension. <coughs> if you don't twist too much, you are in the base state, the liquid state. If you are in uh, below the, this triple point, you start uh, and you increase the twist. You have uh, the first the longitudinal buckling, and then if you twist more, you start uh, getting this uh, triangle that I showed you that is reminiscent of a crumpling state. And if you twist more, then you are into this loop uh, instability. I won't talk about this part of the, this phase diagram because it's not exactly related to uh, what I'm, uh, I'm interested today uh, with this talk. Uh, we are interested in this regime where there is significant tension and the first uh, instability that you cross is the transverse buckling instability. So let's uh, 
let's see what you have. So in that case, we are using uh, latex or uh, on elastomer. When it's uh, wide and thin and then uh, under significant tension, you can get some wrinkle uh, easily. Uh, if it's narrow and thick, uh, yeah, you have just one buckle, it's more like a stiff regime. And then you have uh, some uh, uh, continuous transition between buckling and, and wrinkling. So that's really what we want to understand, this kind of uh, instability. When does that, uh, in, uh, what sets the, the threshold for the instability, what sets the, the wavelength? Uh, so what we can do is to measure the wavelength as a function of all the parameters. So in that case, we just uh, change the thickness. So we have uh, three different thickness. And we plot that against uh, uh, this uh, this parameter. So I won't. I don't. Want, feel free to ask a, a question about what's the model behind. Why did I choose this uh, complex uh, complex parameter? Uh, I, I can give you a clue uh, 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 later. But basically, this parameter uh, is a combination of the geometrical uh, uh, characteristic of my sheet, so the thickness, the length, and the width, and the the, the effect of the tension. And so uh, there is a, so looking at this, uh, this, these results, we have a, a scaling for the wavelength. So just to have a, an idea of where does that come from, basically it's not so different from the wrinkling stability that I showed you initially. What we have is, the, is a longitudinal tension uh, in that direction. Then, uh, then there is a, a, a transverse compression that is driving the instability. So that's why you have wrinkling. And then because you wrinkle, there is a cost to bending. So if you mix these three, these, these three ingredients, transverse compression, tension-induced stiffness, and curvature-induced resistance, you can get uh, 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 this, uh, this scaling. So if you want to have uh, more, uh, like, uh, uh, the derivation of the scaling, then you, there is this publication uh, that you can uh, look at. Uh, there was a... You, uh, qu it's quite, uh, it was quite involved uh, theoretically because the standard uh, uh, model for elastic plate does, does gi doesn't give you anything in terms of compression. So the prediction, if you use classical uh, uh, Foppel von Kalman equation that you use for this kind of problem, they just give you zero uh, compressive stress. So in this, uh, this work that I uh, did with uh, Vincent and Benny, we had to uh, extend the the, the the, the, the elastic plate theory to take into account finite rotation effects. And then if you would take uh, that into account, you can relate tr the transverse stress with the longitudinal stress, and there is uh, 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 an effect of the geometry, uh, the twist angle. But I, I won't go into the detail. The important thing is that we fully understand the, this primary instability, and that will be helpful to understand uh, uh, what's going on later. Okay, uh, so I forgot to how, uh, how much time do I do I until I'm already uh, running out of time, right? No? Seven minutes. Okay. So, uh, good. So now what we are going to do is to uh, see what what, has, what is happening when you're starting to twist, not just a little bit, not just near uh, the, the the instability, but you you go way above the, the first instability. So what I'm going to show you is the same experiment. Instead of using ribbon, we, I'm using a square uh, uh, elastomer. The aspect ratio is much smaller. It's a fixed uh, displacement. And uh, here it's, uh, I'm going to show you a movie. PDMS is transparent. So it's here, but you can see it. And then I, I, I'm going to start uh, twisting the, uh, the, top, the top clamp. So as you twist, you start having this shrinking instability. At a half turn, you get this uh, uh, nice uh, geometrical shape. Then you have an helicoid again, but it's a layered helicoid that gets unstable. And then if you keep on twisting, you start forming uh, uh, a yarn by uh, wrapping uh, uh, th 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 this, this end. So there's lots of going on when you go uh, way above this uh, wrinkling instability. Uh, so, <coughs> the first surprising thing is that it's highly ordered. Uh, so when you do a half turn, you have this, uh, this stack of uh, triangles that are making actually a, a spiral. It's a, we call that spiral, a accordion fold. 
And then when you keep on twisting, then you get this helicoid uh, state that becomes unstable. Okay, so we want to, uh, basically, with the time I have, I'm just going to talk about this, uh, this part. But if you're interested in the whole problem, feel free to ask any question. There is also some, uh, uh, the complexity is also into the, the torque measurement. So instead of having uh, the usual linear relationship between torque and, uh, and angle, here you have something that is oscillating, and it's also tension dependent. So here, uh, we, in this case, uh, the, the, this uh, ordered shape uh, corresponds to this point, a minimum point for the torque. Okay, so we can organize also this, tran this transformation into a parameter space. Uh, when you are at a uh, large, uh, large aspect ratio in the ribbon regime, the helicoid state is predominant. If you are in the square geometry, uh, you are more prone to instability, so you wrinkle, wrinkle more easily. Then you're, you get into a, a safe contact uh, uh, helicoid, and then the yarn regime that we're interested in in, in this uh, a part of the phase diagram. I won't talk about that. So basically, we have a model to explain uh, the evolution of the torque as a function of the angle. And maybe uh, what I want to show you is more about the, the, the morphology uh, uh, of, the, of the folding. So what we do is do, we do the same experiment, but now we, we, we put our uh, twisting machine inside the uh, X-ray tomography. Uh, equipment so that we can get a precise characteriz characterization of the geometry. So here again, it's a, it's a real experiment. We reconstruct the shape of the, of the sheet and we can measure the, uh, the mean curvature. So you have the map of the mean curvature as a function of the twist angle. So initially you have the, the primary wrinkle with the, 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 the wavelength that we studied before. And as you keep on twisting, the, the curvature starts to get more localized. And then there is a symmetry breaking where uh, they are not the, ring, the folds that are appearing are not, more, are not parallel anymore, but form an angle. And what's uh, uh, a result of this, uh, this experiment is that there is no change of wavelength. So that could, we could have expected, for example, pair doubling that happens in a uh, nonlinear system. But in that case, the wavelength does. The, 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 uh, uh, is the same, and so we can have a, a, a good characterization of the morphology far away from the primary instability. So uh, the apex angle is just the wavelength divided by the length, the fold number is the width divided by the wavelength, which uh, almost fully characterized our, 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 our shape at uh, 180 degrees. Uh, then also, it's, uh, uh, it inspired uh, a, a model uh, to explain this kind of kinematics. Because if you look uh, closely enough, and uh, actually the, the talk of uh, Lisa Manning uh, introduced this kind of, uh, of model, our uh, structure is origami. So we have folds that they are non-trivial, that intersect. And then basically, uh, you can uh, mimic the kinematics playing with uh, uh, origami. So I'm going to show you uh, these uh, this orig uh, origami things. So basically what we did, we take uh, an experiment. Uh, from the experiment and the experimental condition, we know what uh, we can measure the, uh, or, or we predict the uh, apex angle. We can predict the number of folds. And then we can just take uh, uh, our origami pattern and just have the same, the same alpha and the same number of triangle, and then fold it. So, uh, so when you fold it carefully, and it's not a complicated origami, so everybody can do it. So when you fold it, you you get exactly the the, the kinematics that you have uh, when uh, doing this twist of a of an elastic stretchy thing. So, okay, so that's uh, that's nice, but that, that's uh, if you think about it, that, that's surprising that uh, origami is for inextensible sheets. And uh, that's funny that uh, an inextensible sheet can reproduce the kinematics. Not perfectly. Uh, if you look at the edge, it's a circular edge here, whereas here it's straight. So it doesn't uh, account for uh, the stretching uh, here, but it accounts for uh, what's happening in this central region. So it's quantitative. Uh, we we checked that uh, uh, our origami model is uh, actually predict the kinematics. 
So I'm going to skip that because I think that I need to conclude. Uh, <laughs> something that uh, maybe that, uh, I'm going to cl close with that. Something that uh, is interesting is that we are not constrained uh, with the origami uh, model. So I can uh, fold a pattern with lots of triangle. And then if you do that, you get a, a, a very a regular pattern. So you get this, uh, in this case, it's an heptagon, so a regular shape, wings, uh, and a, a star-shaped polygon is scribed in it. And so we can, and then lots of mathematicians, lots, I don't know if it's a lot, but uh, mathemat mathematicians have studied that, and they have uh, this, uh, character, they characterize this shape by some symbols that uh, uh, here are int integer, uh, uh, characterizing the, the convex uh, polygon, so the number of or vertex gives uh, the number uh, gives uh, the number p. There is also the turning number related to how how many vertexes you need to skip to go from one side to the other. So that's uh, kind of neat that you have this kind of relationship between uh, a twisting uh, a twisted elastomeric sh uh, sheet. You have the Shafley origami because that's Shafley that gives the the, the symbol and then corresponding a star-shaped polygon. And it works well, so we have also always a correspondence between what we see uh, with the elastomeric sheet, uh, sheet and uh, the, this uh, uh, geometrical uh, uh, shape. Okay, and so with that, uh, we can understand uh, the, the compli uh, com uh, complete, uh, the, the internal architecture of the yarn, because we understood that the primary instability is templated the, the, the packing structure of the yarn. And so uh, when you start with a, a small amplitude wrinkle with some wavelength, this wavelength is cut. Then you get a stack at uh, 360 degrees. Then the secondary instability that gives uh, the structure that you see here. So we understand the topology of uh, the yarn uh, with, this kind of, with this kind of model. And so with that, I, I thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you for the beautiful talk. And we have time perhaps for two questions. We have to rush, but yeah. Questions? Can you imagine uh, to have um, a material that, let's say, you, you add, you put the material, the material is not extensible, but then if you put on water or if you change the, some property, it becomes extensible, then you would recover both properties, you know, from paper to the one that you were pulling, uh, then would you have some uh, universal diagram? Because I, as I could understand, you have these extensible materials, then you, you did this, uh, the hydrography, and then you can recover by, by, uh, in the paper by, you know, following yeah. the same uh, lines. So I need to see the, f yeah, this. So What's happening is that uh, for paper, and then if you want to study the, the morphology, you are along that line, basically. Uh, almost zero. Yeah, because basically, if you increase the the, the, the threshold for uh, tearing the the paper is 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 is, among, is here. You cannot stretch it a lot. So basically, you're only with paper. You can only explore uh, this part. Um, then I, I'm not sure I understand the kind of uh, uh, when you, you change the property for all. Yeah. 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 No, no, it basically it works for paper. It's just that, uh, for example, if you're with an elastomer, it's easy to have a very, add a very small tension and get this triangular shape. But with paper, you can go in this part of the diagram just because it tears. What would be the a typical configuration for a system in the triple point? Uh, let me remember. Wait, well, but the the this experiment is uh, it's kind of sensitive to uh, how you uh, attach the the ribbon. So maybe you can ex theoretically you could expect some stuff that they are difficult to to observe. But when you are around that. Uh, you can see some oscillation when you, you touch a little bit your ribbon, you can go from the longitudinal wrinkling to something that starts to bend. Uh, but 
uh, as you can see, that you, uh, there's no error bar, but there's some fuzziness there. And so, experimentally, it's difficult. But I guess that's uh, an, an interesting uh, uh, point uh, to study this triple point. But uh, experimentally, it's, yeah, it's hard. Okay, right. Thank, Thank you, Julian, again. So we'll start our continuation.